Hey, I'm Amanda Perez Murillo. I'm from San Mateo, California. Uh, I went to San Mateo High School and played college soccer at the University of Washington. My mom was born in Mexico and my dad was born in California. So I have dual citizenship, which means I've been able to represent Mexico in both the youth level and full team level at the World Cups. Um, and I'm currently playing center midfield for Club America. I think in the beginning, I was like most kids. I just loved playing, I really enjoyed it, and I had this passion for it. Um, and as I continued with it, I realized that it was so much more than a game. It was really um, a place where I could go and challenge myself um, to be a better football player and a better person. Um, it was really a place where like my passions and everything can really grow. And also as I've continued to play it and I've made it kind of like my living, um, I, it's taught me so much. Like I've been able to be exposed to new cultures and new people and I've made family and friends. So for me, football isn't just a game. It's really this international lifestyle. And I feel like it's a really special environment to be a part of. So for me, it's, it's of course that like little kid joy and passion, but it's also as an adult, a way where I learn so much about the world and about who I am. And yeah, it's just all of that combined makes football so special to me. I'm lucky enough for this question to have always been fairly easy for me. Um, my older sister, Ron Perez, um, she's a great soccer player. And you know, most people have these role models and these heroes and you see them on TV and you wonder like, what do they do like every day to get where they were? Like, what are those little things that they do that make them different? And I was lucky enough to have my hero, my role model uh, growing up with me, living in the same house. So. I think it's really special to have someone like that to exemplify like all the little things and it was just amazing to see her like accomplish each goal over and over again and I saw the little things she did that were small sacrifices that but made huge differences so for me she was my biggest inspiration and biggest example and I'm just really lucky that I had someone so close to me be that type of person. I think it was actually two factors, uh, one of them being my love for the game. I just love the game so much, I always want to be playing it, be around it, the atmosphere, everything. I just was pulled to it, really. And the second factor was um, my family. And they have just been so supportive and a driving force in all my life. And I would vocalize how much I love soccer and they saw my passion for it. And they just really pushed me and kind of drove me to be like, if you love this, if you want to be the best at this, you have to go for it. So I think it was the love and their support and their drive and also mine that really um, pushed me to like be able to achieve what I've done so far. I think the, one of the most important things is balance in your life. Um, obviously, you want to be like 100% dedicated and committed to what you're doing, but it's very tiring and you can burn out pretty easily. So I think. Um, having things that balance that focus, like I spend a lot of time with my family and I make sure that I am surrounded by like-minded people or people who support me. And another thing I do is like I love to read because it calms me down. It like it gives me time to like get away from everything and just be like really calm. Um, and when you're in a field where it's very competitive and it's very stressful on your mind and your body, it's good to just sometimes be really low key and relaxed. So I think. Um, having a balance is really, really important. I feel like a mistake I've made along my career that's helped me become the player and person I've wanted to be was um, I had a really um, long and difficult um, injury for a little bit when I was younger and I really let it affect my um, mental game. Uh, I started putting limitations on myself, thinking I would never become the player I always hoped I would be or wanted to be. And that really just, um, put me in a bad place because it kind of made me be complacent with who I was. And I just wish I wouldn't have spent so much time um, dragging myself down and putting limitations on myself because once I got out of that state of mind, I realized how much I could have um, improved because of that injury. I became physically and mentally stronger. And I think that mistake of just being in that bad headspace um, and doubting myself has really helped me um, in situations that occur nowadays when I get injured or I have a setback. I just remind myself that like, hey, the hard times are gonna happen and you're gonna hit bumps in the road, but you just have to 
really believe in yourself and your capabilities and if you work hard enough you can get through it and it's all about how badly you want to reach your goal and all the other stuff that happened in the past it's in the past and you just have to look forward and um, keep your head down and just grind it out sometimes. The hardest decision I've had to make in my career has definitely been um, moving overseas and playing in Europe. Um, I'm extremely cl close to my family. I have a big, loving family, and even though I don't regret my decision and it was right, um, it's still hard, you know, missing the family, holidays, big events, but um, it's hard, but you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. Uh, advice I'd give a senior trying to play um, college soccer is just don't compare yourself to other people or players. If you really want to hit your potential, if you want to make it to the next level, and not only just be there, but like make a difference in that next level, you have to try to be your best self, and that comes with challenging yourself, being uncomfortable. Like, if that's physically, mentally, tactically, like, it's okay to struggle during trainings and be like, kind of working hard and be uncomfortable because that's where the most improvement is made. It's in those moments of struggle, it's in those moments of effort where you're not looking at anybody else, but you're just thinking about yourself and how you're going to improve each and every day. What are you nervous? It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Time for ping pong questions. You ready? Yeah. Pre-game music. Anything that gets me moving, but probably reggaeton. I like that. Most used emoji when you text. Uh, the one that's like, like, oh my God, with the eyes like that. <laughs> Instagram or Snapchat? Instagram. Favorite Mexican dish? Be careful. Like everything, but my grandma's enchiladas. Wow, oh. those are so good. So good. Brand for cleats. Favorite brand for cleats? I know this is gonna be like bad, but Adidas. Good, I like Adidas. Game superstition. Oh, I'm dying to know this one. Oh, I have to put my, everything on my left leg first. So if it's like left shoe, right shoe, left shin guard, or it's all left, but it always has to start with left. Always left. Always left. Like socks to the left first. Yeah. Please. When I walk onto the field, left foot first. <laughs> everything left foot first. That is crazy. Never heard of that. Okay. Uh, favorite music artist? You could It could be like currently, or it could be... I, I was obsessed, and he was like the first one that came to my mind, Chance the Rapper. Good. I loved him. I went to like three concerts in one year. <laughs> you love him. That's awesome. If you had the opportunity to be coached by one coach right now at a professional level, who would it be? Okay, it, Pep, because I feel like it'd be amazing. He's like a genius, but also club because like for a hug. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay with the first one. Yes. Um, which team did you support when you were a child? And why? Liverpool. Like, t when I was a baby till now. Liverpool every day, all day. But never walk alone. And why? Steven Gerrard. <laughs> Best, favorite player. Favorite player. Your last question. Favorite league to watch? Uh, Premier League. Why is that? It's in Liverpool. <laughs> you got it. Well done. Okay. So Amanda, thank you so much for taking the time oh, of uh, for being here. I think it's really important in this um, in this project that I'm gonna call motivate and inspire athletes. Um, it's important for me to um, gather all the questions from all the athletes that we that we train here at One v One Training, and through you or through any other athlete that I, that is here help them get answers for their questions. So one of the most questions, that, the most often questions that I get asked is, um, we have a 13, 14, 15 year old stressing about, you know, I'm not playing at the GA level or I'm not playing at that ECNL level. Yeah. I'm never going to make it. And I think part of that is because parents are not well educated in yeah. how the process is. And second, culturally, we live in a very competitive environment. Um, so what are your thoughts that you would, you know, share with the audience about, you know, um, for that type of player that is not playing at that highest level at that age, 13, 14, or maybe a freshman in high school or a sophomore in high school? What would be the, 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 the message? Yeah, I can, I can basically be, use a personal example, like I, throughout club, didn't play at 
the highest level. Like I wasn't at like um, playing at elite level in college. Um, I even played in like Sunday leagues probably for a couple years too. And I would just say, obviously like you wanna be in a competitive team, but the most important thing you can do is to develop yourself and become the best player you can be because in the process of college recruiting and everything, it's great to be on a good team, but they're not recruiting teams, they're recruiting players. And so if you develop yourself and you gain confidence through training, that like how you train is how you play. Um, if you really develop yourself, then when those moments come in like showcases or in those matches and you're able to be seen, really you can take advantage of those moments. So I think it's just most important to really focus on yourself and I know like the whole process and the clubs and stuff, it's it's really confusing and it's really competitive, but as long as you're doing your best and working on yourself, then I think you don't need to stress so much because you're putting, you're doing everything you can, you're putting in the work. Yeah. I feel like it's a very stressful situation, you know, for a lot of athletes out there and they panic. They're like, oh my God, yeah. I'm never going to make it to college if I don't play academy as a freshman or academy. No. As, you know, yeah. it's like, and I keep telling them, but it's good that you say that because you're a player that has been there and done that. So yeah. you didn't hear from me. No. Okay. So thank you so much for being here. No, thank you for having me. It was and great. It was great. Thank you so much. All right. All right.